Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. Here's people who aren't really sure who you are. Do you mind just like introducing yourself and talk a bit about what you're studying at the moment? My name is Swaram Ahmed and I'm like a Victoria Design student, like media design, and I study like commerce as a minor. I'm like a second year at the moment at Victoria University in Wellington. Nice. So um, why did you decide on studying design and like why... Vic. So Vic's pretty much the only university that like offers it because I was thinking of going to Dunedin first but like they didn't have the course that I wanted and the reason I like chose design was because I was like something I've always been wanting to do since I was like in high school. I'd always be designing posters and magazines and stuff. I was like might as well do this. Cool and then you're minoring commerce? So Yeah so I'm doing commerce like this semester just because there's like something different. It's just like two, two subjects right, just so for fun. So what do you do for commerce? So it's marketing and management, like it's two separate courses okay. and marketing is basically like learning about the markets and stuff. It's real basic, but I thought it could be like helpful for like my photos and like stuff like that. So I took it. Right. I'm wondering because like design isn't super, I guess, conventional degree. Like, did you ever feel pressure to like study something else? You know, do something yeah, all the time. All the time. I was like, I should have just done a BCom like everyone else. Design is very, very different to like other people's degrees and everything. And it's obviously like not like the same as everyone else and there's way less people doing it yeah. the way it's structured is different there's a whole new campus for it and like it's separated from everyone else so the whole time I was like oh I should have just done like something like easy like marketing or something and then I, now I'm doing marketing and I'm like you know what I actually love design mm -hmm. so that's where I'm at cool so like what is the structure like do you guys have papers that you have to take or do you like choose what you want to do yeah so like first year you have like specific papers you have to take no matter what your major is then after that in like your second semester of your first year you get like two options of to like what you want to choose um for your major and you do that but we have like no like assessments like a test or anything like that at the end of the year it's all based on like assignments and big projects and stuff like that okay. so that's that's pretty much it and the second year you get one course throughout the whole year that you have to take no matter what your degree is and then everything else you can just choose depending on your degree. Cool. So what's the, your schedule? Like do you have classes every day? Or? At the moment I have classes every day except Thursday. Um, like today I just finished class about like half an hour ago and then I started at like 11 so I have like two classes today and I usually study for a bit in between those two classes and then yesterday I had only one class so it's like it's, it's, it's a bit like weird but I have class like every day and then it's usually just a lot of assignments after that. Yeah, because the classes are like, usually it's like lectures and then tutorials. But like for design, you don't really need to go to the lectures because they're like, there's no test or anything. So I usually just go to the tutorials and they, it's just like classwork and like assignments, like work. And so I do that for like an hour, two hours, and then I go home and do more of it. Right, cool. I'm wondering like yeah. about entry. Um, Like, did you need to do a portfolio or to get it? No, nah, nothing like that. I pretty, like, you just have to get university entrance and then you can do it pretty much in but like for sec for first year you you don't really have any requirements but for second year for like media design you have to have like a I think it's an a minus to get into like media design like average or whatever and like a couple courses and then your grades from other courses like the core ones don't really matter too much it's not too hard to be honest yeah this is kind of ge a general question but like do you feel like you're actually learning valuable stuff or like do you feel like you need to go like to uni to do design? no like everything i got taught i knew how to do already okay like all the software all the everything they pretty much teach us in terms of like how to do stuff i knew how to do okay. and then like the assignments that they gave us was kind of like i always felt weren't really beneficial or like they kind of felt like i was wasting my time doing these projects but like all things considered it's good in in teaching you how to think because like that's one thing like like youtube is where i learned all my stuff that's one thing YouTube hasn't taught me is like how to like creatively think. Cause when I went to like do marketing and I've done like a year of design, everyone was thinking like the same stuff. And I was like, they taught us how to like look at other perspectives, look at how to tackle things in like a different way. Whereas I feel like in marketing and like management and stuff, like that, they don't really teach you that. Whereas in design, it's more focused on like how to think. Cause there's no right answer in design. It's just like, it's based on your work and how you perceive it. And it's just how good were your skills and all that. And then if you, if you know how to do the skills and all that, and then they judge you on like how well your perception is basically, which is like really hard to judge, but that's how they do it. So what about like making friends? Like have you made friends in uni or like how's it been for you? First year, I was in a university hall. So it was really, really easy. I just made friends with people on my floor, people like, especially the hall I was in, which is like Cumberland House, which was like two, three minutes away from like the design campus. 
almost everyone around me was doing design. So we had classes together, we had a hall together and we just became friends in that same group. But this year it's been much harder because I've been obviously there's online stuff. So like you can't really make friends like through the Zoom and online classes. It's also like I'm in design, I'm stuck with the people I was already friends with. So like, it's not like I'm making new friends. And in, in marketing and management, I felt since I'm doing a first year paper, because I haven't done them, it's much harder because they're already in like friend groups. I kind of just stick to myself in marketing and management because like you, you're not making friends with lectures let's be honest so i was wondering like do you do you have a part-time job or do you feel like it's manageable to work while you're studying yeah so i i work at like spark part-time so i work two days a week so i have two days off every week which is uh thursday and saturday and i work at spark on those days and um which is all right like i just sell stuff it's manageable if like in design and stuff like that but you have to really like manage your time and your assignments well. There has been times where I've, I've had to stay up later and like finish assignments just because I had work the next day or something like that. But it's it's definitely worth getting money. Cool, cool. Um, so I know you're quite into photography. So if someone's just like, maybe like a beginner, do you have any gear that you would recommend? To be honest, if it's photography, like my best advice is that it does, literally doesn't even matter what you have. Because I had, I started in 2017 and I had like an iPhone 6. Yeah. And I was just doing it off that. And then I got like a $400 camera, like a very entry DSLR. And I just used that and I did weddings and I did events and like photography and like 21st events and stuff like that, all with like a $400 camera. I eventually ended up upgrading to like a slightly better camera, slightly better phone and all that. But the truth is it does, it does not matter. Like if you want to do it, it doesn't matter what you have. Like if you have like an iPhone or like, you know, any kind of smartphone that has a decent camera, then that'll do. And then you can work up from that. Also, like, why did you start your YouTube channel? And like, how did that come about? (laughs) Um, I was in the halls. Yeah. And I was sitting with some friends and I was already doing photography and stuff like that. So I already had a camera and I bought like a stabilizer. And since my camera was really old, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I'll just use my phone to film stuff. I was just around people and I, like the YouTube videos I was watching was like of like college vlogs and stuff. And I was like, oh, these are kind of cool. I can try and like make this. And I was like, oh, it'd be cool to make one about like design and stuff like that. I literally just did it because it was kind of already in the lane of like photography. And then the people around me were like supportive and stuff. And they didn't really care if I was filming them. So that's kind of how it went. And then it was just, like, it's just something else I wanted to try in my lane. So it's slightly different to photography, but it's also like in the same like genre. So I was like, cool, like, I want to try that too. So yeah, like who are some of, some of your favorite YouTubers? Or like who, what do you like to watch on YouTube? Oh, <laughs> I mainly watch like nowadays, it's more like informative videos, like stuff that teaches me something. So like, I watch a lot of this guy named Peter McKinnon. He's like a photographer and like a videographer and he just teaches you how to like take photos and stuff. I've been watching him since like 2017 and he's the one that like taught me everything I know about uh, photography. Now, lately I've been watching like this guy named Elliot Choi, who's like a college like YouTuber and like day in the life kind of guy. So I watched a little bit of him, some bit of Casey Neistat because he does like nice vlogs too, but not a lot of YouTube lately to be honest, but that was like the three main people that I watch. Do you find that like since after you started making videos, like it changes how you watch videos? Because like now I notice like people- Yeah, like- <laughs> Yeah, I can see every, like, jump cut that you did. It's, like, really obvious. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, 100%. And it's also, like, everything I say, I, like, rewind, and I'm like, how'd you do that? <laughs> I mean, how'd you make the edit? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely, it has changed. So, yeah, I, do you have any um, favourite spots in Wellington? Or, like, say someone's coming to visit, any things that you would, like, recommend people do? Uh, the waterfront. Yeah. <laughs> the waterfront is easily like the waterfront or like Cuba Street, which is like the main two places I go for a walk because I live near Cuba Street, which is like where all the cafes, uh, thrift stores, or like m- pretty much m- all the stores in like the heart of Wellington would be. I'd say it's a lot like more lively than like the rest of Wellington. And then when you get to the waterfront, it's just beautiful there. So if you can like you know manage the wind. Yeah, yeah. I heard it's really windy. Like, is it actually like is it really bad or is it just? Maybe? Oh, it's it's terrible. It's just like, it gets worse over summer. I swear and like. To like film outside is so much harder so i try to do all the talking parts like inside like i don't have to like deal with the wind yeah so are you like are you flatting at the moment yeah so i'm currently in a flat with four other people but they're just like random people okay. that like fit. like wellington is like the worst situation to flat because okay. um the rent's like super expensive to be in the city it's, it's terrible like the houses are bad uh, it's, i would not recommend but like yeah you, how did you find your flat like just online or I found it through a friend of a friend okay. and then I like viewed it and just 
like they had one room open and like I was like okay cool yeah I'll take it like it's a pretty like all right situation but it's really small there's only like one bathroom and there's like five of us there's like a window but it only looks out to the living room I get no sunlight almost all Wellington flats that I've looked at have uh, either windows that look out nowhere to like either like a, another wall another living room or literally to like another building so it's like covered you don't get any sunlight or it's like a skylight so you get like um like one of my rooms in the hall before I moved out of that room into another room was like a skylight so you just got like light coming from the roof but you couldn't see anything so you never knew what the weather or anything was it's just like it, it's terrible but that's like 90% of Wellington. So I guess like as a creative person like do you ever feel you lack inspiration or like how do you go about like, that if you're like, mm. really inspired what do you what do you do? <laughs> I get uninspired quite a lot actually recently because of like uni. It's like a constant battle. I'm not actually directly studying photography or like videography or anything like that. I'm studying more like making posters and like animations and stuff like that. So that kind of design. So when I'm doing that and I'm like, you know, motivated or like it's an assignment and I have to do that and I'm thinking about that, I find it really hard to do the other like photography side of it. So like to get out of that, into the other side I have to watch like a lot of YouTube of other people doing photography I have to go through Instagram for like hours and be like how did he do this photo like how did he do this photo or like Pinterest and then eventually I'm like okay cool I have a little bit of time now I can like try and recreate a photo and then once I recreate a photo I'm like okay cool now I can like I'm motivated to go again so it's, it's pretty rough um sometimes but like you have to like push through it I don't know if you're into traveling but like is there any places that you want to visit oh New York 100% Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no, no doubt about that. I mean, I know in the situation right now, it's not the best, but like eventually New York, like I, I want to live there too. I don't know. It's just, I feel like it would be like way, way better for photography because there's like so many things you could do and so many more people. Yeah. So like, is your plans kind of like to move overseas after you finish uni? Yeah. Like, uh, so I have like one more year left in my degree. Like my semester finishes at the end of this month and then I have one more year and then I'm assuming I'll probably have to like stay off and pay my loan before I like move out and then after that I will probably to New York hopefully if everything goes to plan do like photography yeah I think it'd be cool to live there but I, like I heard it's really hard because like it's really expensive as well eh? oh yeah <laughs> yeah but like, I'm used to expensive like here in Wellington like for, for New Zealand Wellington is very expensive for like the stupidest stuff like park oh my god like not that I have a car but all my friends that have a car they can't come and visit me in the city because they have to like pay like eight dollars an hour for parking so it's pretty rough it's just finally if someone's watching this and they want to come and study design like in wellington do you have any tips or final advice Ooh, tips if it's first year design and you guys are in a hall let's just say they're in a hall don't stress like it's very like i overstressed for a lot of stuff that i didn't need to the second thing would be to try and like chip away at all your assignments at least like five percent each 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 day that you you have it so like let's say you get it because usually what happens is that you get a brief for this assignment about a month before it's due yeah. i'd say chip away it like that's the biggest mistake i i've like made is i leave it to like the last couple of days and then try to do it all at once and the thing is the markers can tell because like all your iterations and like your progress progressions and stuff they can tell it hasn't changed a lot because it's been done within a couple of days but if you chip away at it from like the first of the month to like the end of the month, they'll be able to see how much you progressed. So that will just bode well for you. So I like be like manage your time. I have fun to be honest. Like design is such a chill subject, like compared to other people. Like it can get it can get hard, but like don't don't overstress. Think about it. Like take a step back. Sometimes things will get really hard at some points. So you just have to detach yourself, kind of. So like go on walks, go on I don't know whatever your therapy sessions are. Like go to the gym. It's just like something to get your like mind ahead of it. Thinking of creatively of like something that doesn't really have that many boundaries. For an assignment, it's not like a report where they tell you like this is what I need. This is what you have to write about, and then all you have to do is kind of like find research and then just write the report. It's kind of like, yo, okay, cool, like, design me a logo. Like, it has to be this size. You can do whatever you want with it. You have, like, pretty much limitless, like, options. So, like, it can get really taxing and frustrating and all that. So, it's good to, like, take a break away from it as well. Refresh your mind. Yeah, I, f I feel like design's not really known for career opportunities. So, like, everyone that's doing it is, like, super passionate about it. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, if you're going to do it, do it because you like it. Because I've had so many people that, did it because they slightly liked it or like you know they're like oh this is kind of interesting and then they get to it and it's like really taxing and really frustrating and all that and you have to like be really prepared to be able to do it and like a lot of people dropped out or changed degrees because they just weren't that passionate about it and obviously like 
to be honest, there's not a lot of career options. Like it's very limited. Like we have a few workshops that you can go into like weather workshops and stuff like that, but they only take very few applicants every year. So not only does your work have to be like the best of the best, like A plus to even get a good job, you have to like, be able to like want to like stick it out for that long. Cause then you have to go get a master's if you want to like proper degree and like proper job. So it's good to do a double degree, which is why I started doing marketing as well. If I can, if I can get like a business job or like a design job, then it's much been much more beneficial to have like a marketing minor. Cause then you can kind of like do best of both. And like a lot of people in design don't actually do double degrees. So that gives you an advantage over other people as well. It's, it's always yeah. good to do like lots of different things, but then you can have different skills and like different perspectives. Yeah. Like you definitely need more options and like. To be honest, like it's not recommended. It's not what you do during your time at uni. That, but like, I recommend making a portfolio, like your own, like building it throughout your years and like building a portfolio. Because when you apply for a job, people want to see your portfolio, even if you didn't need one when you went to uni. Like they look at your degree, but the truth is, let's say everyone has the same degree as like media design. Everyone has a different style of design. So like the company needs to know what kind of style they're looking for in a portfolio. Helps with that. Right. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty much it from me. Um. Thanks so much. Oh, sweet. Um, I'll leave your links down below so people can. Oh, sweet! Thank you. Thank you for having me. No this worries. is really cool. No worries. Um, <laughs> good luck with everything. Um, and like your YouTube and everything. And yeah, I'll see you later. I guess. Yeah.